And the other one is um, Bhargavi Dabar, who works in community, alternative healing, um, creativity, and um, spirituality. So I'm kind of giving you the foundation so that you just kind of understand where I'm coming from. Um, and the work that we've been we've been involved in um, actually runs without funds. So the Red Door, uh, the community organization I run, has never been funded. Kriya just gave us a seed grant in the beginning in 2011 for a thousand bucks, and after that we just worked with people who want to collaborate, goodwill, uh, babysitting other people's kids, uh, pets, maybe exchange of some other kind of kindness, and you know what I'm talking about. But it kind of works. <laughs> <laughs> it works. <laughs> it's all about the hard work, right? So the hard work. Sorry. Um, so the story, the story about uh, why we're doing what we're doing in response, and keeping in mind what Ratna's doing, what Bhargavi is doing, what Steena is doing, um, comes back to my story about kids. Because when my my, my entrance into uh, into the world of mental health. Of course, came because I was diagnosed with uh, paranoid schizophrenia and I live without medications. And the system says that you can't live without medications, it's impossible. It's impossible for you to be without medications. But that's a story the whole world knows. But my, my, um, my story with the um, institution or the system starts at the age of 14 and a half when I ran away from home. Um, and when I returned, because I had to chop my hair off, I had to, you know, wrap my breast. I had to do a lot of things to look at, like, look like a boy, only to find out a lot of men rape boys. Um, so then I was taken to a psychiatrist. And in turn, he, th this is in Malaysia, so my, my story is Malaysia and India. Um, and he tells my parents that I'm a transsexual in just 15 minutes of meeting a 15-year-old child. And at 15, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I am yet, I've just had experience puberty for two years, you know, but there is a system of these men who exist, I'm specifically saying men, um, old men, patriarchal, patronizing men, who have a privilege of studying and understanding all these symptoms, this DSM and things like that, and in one moment he can convince your parents to make their biggest mistake. Right? Because they believe him. We think doctors are gods. We do that. And my mom being your typical Indian Maharashtrian woman who couldn't speak a word and married my dad, for her it was, wow, my child is in this horrible place. After that, what followed was correctional facilities, correctional camps, religious camps. I was thrown into all of that. Um, not for two years like in America, but these are one week. In one week, they will find every possible way to break you down in every, in every angle, emotionally, spiritually, religiously, uh, through gender, whatever. So I, so I grew up having a lot of different identities. Um, I didn't know these were called symptoms. So it was interesting because I grew up accepting myself. I was really well. I grew up accepting I can be a boy who is both asexual, gay, and straight. I could be a girl who can be asexual, gay, or straight, or bisexual. I, I could be a combination. I could be other narrator. I was accepting myself at so many levels until I was diagnosed with schizophrenia. And that told me that's exactly what Ratna was saying. Once you have that label put onto you, it never goes away. For me, I look at madness as a way that, I mean, schizophrenia saved me. Listen to the voices in your head, like in response to what you were, you were talking about. We look at the alternative spectrum, the, the creative or the healing spectrum. Um, because now that I'm working in school, so whatever we've been doing in school in the past one and a half years, is a translation of what has happened to me as a kid. When I spent five years doing work with the Red Door at the grassroots level, speaking to different people who are not really in the system, understanding their cultural habits, their sexual habits, their beliefs, their religious, political, you know, all this blah, 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 formal words that will take too much of time to say right now. But just trying to figure that out and see where I fit in and the deal is you don't have to fit in, right? I don't have to fit into the LGBT spectrum either. Um, and then going back to this idea of what then is recovery. Because the system tells you you have to recover, but recovery on the other hand is, uh, is, is a destination that has been given to you, much like enlightenment is. 
So based on this model, you know, everybody's aiming, but you're not really going to get there because it's like perfection. Perfection is a forward-moving goal. You can't really get there. So instead of doing that, instead of going that way, we said, how about we just look at the child inside all of us and we reverse, go back to basic and stick to healing. Healing is, pro is a process that happens every single day, 24-7. Uh, because when you're looking at psychosocial disability, yes, it is invisible, yes, there's stigma, there's self-stigma, there's self-violence, there's self-bullying. Um, my response of trauma it will be every day, right? Maybe you do smoke in my face, that could be traumatic for me. So do I want to give it a label tomorrow that will, that will become something I must aim to get over? Or do I want to heal with it tomorrow so that I can still be around you? The latter would be a better option for me. So we present these kind of dialogues or these kind of narratives um, to individuals who come to us. Um, and they, how, how do they come to us is, so uh, the Red is not a registered organization. I have no legal rights, so I've made that my political statement. But we've been, um, I was featured in a documentary and because it made me a public uh, face, um, I decided to use that. So people were writing in. And when individuals know you're someone with a lived experience, then they, they want to talk to you about it. So we call that peer support. Um, in the um, advocacy movements, uh, in the larger advocacy movement, these are called peer support. We just call them being friends. You know, because as friends, you kind of accept each other's nonsense and madness and craziness. So we can talk about, hey, you know, I had sex with that demon and he was really good. Right? But um, neuropsychology or neuro, neuro, neurologists will say that's a sleep disorder. I say, screw you. <laughs> so this becomes important because I want to have sex with my demon. But if I tell a tantric over that, he was like, oh, you know, wow, you can do that, right? So the different. <laughs> that is. <laughs> <laughs> that's the next workshop. <laughs> so, so, so in, 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 in um, speaking to different people, like if I speak to shamans and um, I tell them I'm already hallucinating, they're like, good, I don't have to give you the ayahuasca, you're already there. Right? If I speak to a tantric and I say, well, that demon came to, uh, did this with me on bed, and he's like, that's so cool, it takes us like an entire full moon ritual to get over there, to get, to, to get that, that demon to sleep with you. You know, so when I keep on <laughs> so when I meet these different individuals who call themselves healers or you know spiritual people, etc., they are offering these different perspectives that are so much more welcoming and so much more open. And they're like, it's good. You can be with both man, woman, demon, Christ, whatever. Like, just name it. You're just you can be with all of them. Is that not what human evolution is about? That you're always adapting to the situation. You can call it multiple personality disorder, schizophrenia, or you can give it different names. But we were offering these narratives of these different perspectives to people and uh, their family members, you know, talking to them from where they are coming from. Um, even death counseling, for example, you know, the family member decides to kill herself and the mother decides to, uh, she, she doesn't know how to look at the situation. I said, aren't you happy? And, and then she says, yes. You know, because she comes from a religious, spiritual background that allows her to accept it. And we're just getting them to understand. So the peer support works in that kind of a model where we're just allowing people to talk about themselves. Also using art. Um, this includes um, painting, drama, storytelling, martial arts, yoga, and some individuals do choose medication. So we're not against medications, we are just your choice. If this is how you want it, then okay, we'll just kind of help you get over there. We're not going to tell you what you need to use, what you need to do, this is who you should see. We will give you, we'll try and empower you with all possible tools I have. It's over there. You're free to take it, you're free to not take it, because some people don't want to have choice. Uh, this, this I see from a lot of women from, who come from the older, from a different generation where they used to not having choice in front of them. So she says, no, you know, the, it's, it's confusing you and you give me so much of choice. I don't want that choice. I'm going to stick here. Well, fair enough. That's also you. So how do we, how do we accept the humanness and just get people to embrace their humanness? Um, so the red dot translates all of this little other things into what we call bullying. Uh, because when I was looking at my own narrative, you know, it, it took time to, to, to realize that I was actually self-bullying. 
and I was a bully, I was bullied, it, it went on, and um, they're now in school. I mean, one year in school has made me realize that bullying is really part of all our lives. We are actually bullying ourselves. Sometimes I bully myself when I come for a conference like this and I go back home and I'm like, oh Lord, what I talk in the conference isn't what I'm doing at home. What I'm doing at home isn't what I'm practicing or I'm preaching in a conference, right? So that to me describes like all our mental health, which is important in how <laughs> we need to translate all of that. Because the concept of bullying itself is inherent in all of us. I see that, I see I was also bullying my mom because my mom is so used to it. You know, mothers are used to getting bullied by their patriarchal husbands because their husbands didn't know any better. So we go back to school where then in one year I finally get boys who can now sit in front of me and just have tears in their eyes and I'm just wishing for the day when they can just burst out crying. And that will be, that will be the next step because we're, um, you know, we can empower girls, but when the girls get angry at me, you know, Didi, you didn't teach us martial arts, you were busy with the boys. I said, yeah, I was five, I was busy with him for five days. Did he, did he come in trouble? And then it gets, I was busy teaching the boys and spending time with them and being their friend for five days. In that time, did he come in trouble? You? And they said, no. I said, that's what I meant. I can teach you all the martial arts. You will still get your ass kicked, but they need to be actually taken care of. They need to have an expression. So I found that very important that working with boys at that young age is important right now in the work that I'm doing because I know the world comprises of men who can be assholes, right? But something made them like that. It's also a choice that some of them become assholes. But I think kids, boys, are they might come across as being jerks or whatever, but they're still kids and, and you still have that ability to influence them because there's an innocent and, and there's an innocent person there, the self, that tends to make mistake even though he's trying to pretend to be a sociopath. And getting through to them at that level, that intervention is how we're taking over the, I mean, we're trying to go to the next step, the early intervention in mental health in schools, in institutions, uh, because I have to work in my limitations, I have the money, right? Um, and, but I can be somebody's friend that, uh, this, that, that, that that I didn't have because I had to have imaginary friends. But when you offer that to boys, uh, violence amongst school, in, amongst the girls actually reduced and now the girls are being peer support to these boys. So it's an interesting shift in the power dynamic because there is no power dynamic left anymore. It's more just friends. Um, and that's reducing the rate of depression um, or even suicidal feelings in them. Um, and I will end by that because I, I don't want to finish at one minute. I would like to finish like 30 seconds earlier. 